In this video, I'm going to be showing you all the different options that you have using Zoom to hold virtual meetings for your business, organization, school, and more. Hey guys, my name is Jeff. Thanks so much for checking out this video. So there is a lot to talk about with using Zoom. Uh, I am going to go through a complete walkthrough, everything from how to create a Zoom account all the way through uh, jumping into meetings and all the different options you have. So this is kind of a lengthy video, um, so a, kind of a longer video than some of the other videos on our channel. So to help you out, save you some time, if there's just certain questions you have or certain topics that you want to hear about, I have created timestamps down in the description below and you can use those to jump to different parts of the video that you are most interested in or concerned about. Um, but in the meantime, just to briefly talk about uh, some of the different topics I'm going to discuss in this video, uh, we're going to go through how to create a brand new Zoom account, how to host a meeting, what are your options with hosting meetings. Uh, there are options on Zoom for having a free plan as well as paid pricing plans. We're going to go through the differences in those as well as how to invite different participants to your meeting once you've started the meeting. Uh, a walkthrough of the interface as well as all the different options you have using Zoom to share your screen. So if you want to incorporate different pieces of media such as uh, documents or maybe PowerPoint slides, pictures, videos, audio, and more. We're going to discuss all of that as well as go through how to email and invite people to get them into your meeting as well. So without further ado, let's jump into using Zoom. So Zoom is a uh, video conferencing piece of software and I guess a lot of questions that I've seen online are, is it free to use? And it does have different options. So at its most basic, if you go to zoom.us, if you want to get started, um, you can sign up for a free account. And there are paying options where you can upgrade and you'll get more options with those paid plans. But ideally, the free version is going to get you set up and, and get you running for what you want to get doing. So for this video, to keep things as simple as possible, um, I'm going to just walk you through what it's going to take to set up and host a meeting. So if you've never used Zoom before, you will first need to sign up for an account. And when you go to sign up, you can either enter your work email address or you can sign in with Google or Facebook if you've got those accounts. So in this instance, um, I would be signing in through Google. And then from here, I'm going to choose my account and I will go ahead and sign in. And then from this point, I am signed in, and this is kind of my dashboard where I can see all of my different options. Uh, from this point, you could host a meeting, which is up here, but before you even do that, what I would recommend you want to do is set up your profile. So you can go up here to the upper right corner where I currently have my picture, and if you click on that, you will see here your information for your account. If you click on that, that takes you into your personal profile. And what I would do here is, uh, if you can, get some sort of a picture of yourself and put that in there. Uh, you can just go to change here or delete to kind of adjust those options. And then you've got an area here where you will see all the different information about your current profile. Uh, you also can see meeting information, so if you've got any scheduled meetings, webinars, uh, recordings, you can go into all of these different areas under your profile, and again, that was in the upper right. So if you've at least got your picture in there, uh, I think that makes things a little bit more professional. So in each one of our videos on this channel, we hide Tinker, who's our little robot. And you may see him pop up somewhere in this video. If you do, be sure to let us know down in the comments section below. Uh, and include the exact timestamp where you saw him pop up. He's going to be kind of hard to find. They are challenging, but if you're the first person to leave the correct timestamp of where you saw Tinker, our robot, we will add your name to our Tinker Forward Hall of Fame on our website. 
uh, and uh, you will be immortalized forever on our Tinkerford Hall of Fame. From this point, you would be ready to host a meeting. And you can go again up here to the upper right and hosting a meeting, uh, you get the option to do it with video on, with video off, or to just screen share only. For this tutorial, I'm gonna do it with video on. So we're gonna click on that. And it is going to give me uh, an option here where it's gonna say, do you wanna open Zoom? So it wants to install a separate application uh, that it's going to run on my computer and uh, I'm gonna click open zoom just like it's telling me to do so here and when I do that it is going to open up the zoom application hey there we are and as you can see uh, I'm gonna pop up and I am uh, getting ready to do my uh, meeting so the first time well actually I think every time you are gonna go into a meeting it's gonna ask you here how you want to join so we're gonna join with computer audio so I'm going to click that uh, and it says here that I'm using the computer audio and from this point this is my zoom uh, window where I am going to be hosting my meeting so the meeting is currently running and because we signed up for a free account, we are actually only limited to 40 minutes that we can have our free meeting. Now, some people have asked uh, that I've seen online, if you go over that 40 minutes, can you just start another meeting? You can start another meeting, but what we haven't gotten to yet is uh, you will need to re-invite everybody to another a link to go into a new meeting if you exceed the 40 minutes that you're allowed with the free uh, the free version of zoom so before we get more into details of that let's go through what we're doing here with zoom so I am using the webcam that is built into my laptop computer and I would recommend that if you are going to be using a laptop computer you can also use a mobile device but you're gonna wanna make things a little bit more natural and I would recommend uh, raising up your laptop or your mobile device to the level of your face. So in this instance, on my desk, I actually have a laptop stand that raises my laptop up about another 12 inches and that puts the screen uh, or the camera on my screen at my face level so that you're not looking way up or way down at me. Uh, the other thing is I've got light coming in from the windows of my office here which is allowing you to see my face very well versus if I'm in a dark room or if I'm gonna be laying on my bed or something like that you're not gonna get as good of a picture uh, in those different settings. So things to just think about. I'm also in a room that doesn't have a lot of other exterior noise going on. Uh, I've got kids and my wife who are doing things in other rooms of my house, but so that you can clearly hear me and see what's going on. Those are different things I've taken into account here, thinking about how I'm gonna sound, how I'm gonna look, and then uh, you know things like lighting and uh, what angle and what level I've got my laptop positioned at. Now you can also use Zoom on your mobile device such as a tablet or your phone uh, and in that instance you uh, might think that you want to just hold your phone or your device the entire time and if you're going to be sitting there for like 40 minutes I would recommend that you lean that up either on a desk or again to try and bring it to more of your face level. If you've got a tripod or some sort of stand that you can attach that mobile device to, again, that's gonna make things a little bit more natural as far as being face to face with you. I also wanna to mention to you guys that in addition to using Zoom, I just recently did a video here that talks about my top five video chat apps that are best used for connecting with like friends and family. Zoom is one of them, but there's also some other great options such as Facebook Messenger. There's even a Messenger for kids as well as Skype. And I go through different examples of these apps uh, and give you tips on using them in the video that I will link in the cards as well as down in the description below. Great to watch after you're done learning about Zoom. So let's go through the interface here in the Zoom meeting. And as I'm mousing around, I get this uh, pop-up of all my different options on the bottom here. I can also make this full screen if I want. So let's do that. And when I am full screen here, as I move around, 
uh, down on the bottom, I've got options here where I can mute or unmute myself. So if I mute myself, now whoever I am chatting with in this meeting will not be able to hear me. They'll be able to see me, uh, but they won't be able to hear me. I've also got the option here where I can stop my video. And when you stop your video, you will just get that profile picture that you have uploaded into your profile, which is why I was recommending you do that first, uh, because that just, you know, if you do choose where you don't want to use video for your uh, for your meeting, at least there's still some sort of a, a picture of you that's going to pop up as well. So you've got options to mute and unmute yourself here down at the bottom. Uh, in addition to that, if you click on these other areas, they're going to give you more options. So if you did want to switch microphones, if you did want to switch cameras, you can do that. I would say on the most basic level though, you don't need to mess with any of these settings. These settings are, are going to be set up for default for working with your computer or your, your mobile device. So you can leave those, but you have more options if you want to customize. So as we keep moving along here, the next thing you're going to want to do is invite people to your meeting. And uh, if we go to invite, we will click the invite button here. You get a couple of different options of how you can invite people. And as you uh, continue to use Zoom, you can actually start adding contacts to the Zoom application. What I would recommend you do to invite people is use the email feature. This is probably the most simplistic uh, thing you can do to invite people. Um, Every meeting that you're doing on Zoom is going to have its own meeting number. And if you've got friends or family or coworkers email addresses, uh, you can just click on what email system you want to use. So in this instance, you can go to Gmail. It is going to pop up with my Gmail account. And it is going to set up an email here that I can use to email out. And it's going to have this URL right here. And it's got the meeting ID number and the password. And all this information is what people are going to need to join your meeting. The only thing you're going to need to do is type in the email address. So if I am going to email this to myself here... Uh, everything is in this email that's going to be needed to get somebody to join your meeting. I'm going to send this off. And while that is being sent off, I'm going to jump back over to the Zoom application. Uh, you can invite as many people as you want. Uh, I believe you are limited with the free version. Um, you, you are limited to how many people you can have on your meeting and we'll go into that. Actually, let's do that real quick here. Uh, let's jump over to the Zoom website, and since we're talking about that, under the plans and pricing, if you go to that, you will see all of the different Zoom meeting plans. Uh, the basic, the free, which is what we're using, what we signed up for here, uh, you can host up to 100 participants. So if you are going to need to do more than that, you'll need to go for one of these other plans that you'll need to pay for, the pro for 15 a month, uh, the business or the enterprise. And you'll notice that as far as paying for these, only the host of these meetings needs to be the one paying for these. Anybody that's attending does not need to pay any type of a fee monthly uh, to be a part of those meetings. So as we're kind of looking at this, the free meeting plan also has those limits of 40 minutes. Uh, and when you reach that 40 minutes, the video just cuts off. So there really is not any indicator or timer countdown or anything like that. So if you are doing these free meetings, you're going to want to set up your own timer somewhere just to keep track of how long that meeting has been existing. But again, you could send out another link shortly before that meeting is, uh, or right after that meeting ends, to re-invite people back to a brand new meeting. It's just kind of a hassle to have to do that. 
Um, in addition to that, you do get more options of what you can do with these paid plans. But I think for the most basic here, if you're just looking for a meeting that you can do for under 40 minutes, this is definitely, uh, the, the free plan is definitely going to help you out. So as we jump back into the Zoom interface here, that is how you can invite people. Uh, in addition to using email, if you are chatting with somebody online, maybe uh, through like Facebook Messenger or something like that, and you wanted to post a link, that same link that I was showing you that's in that email is that URL. You can just click this copy URL button and it's been copied to my clipboard. Now I can go to whatever other uh, place that I want to copy that URL into and then I can just do control plus holding down V or right click on my computer to paste paste that URL and when people click through that that URL that is going to get them into this Zoom meeting. So I'm curious to know how do you plan on using Zoom? Are you a teacher? Are you an instructor? Do you just want to hang out with friends? Um, let me know down in the comments section below. So from this Zoom meeting, once you've got participants, we just have me right now as the only participant that's here, you'll see other participants pop up here as they come in um, to give you more control over the meeting, you can do things like you can mute all of them. So if you have a lot of students or participants and you think they're going to be coming in uh, and they're going to be like my my uh, fourth grade son is holding some of his classroom uh, learning sessions virtually, he's there with like 20 other kids and when all of them come in there, if they're not muted, they're all talking and it's impossible to hear or understand what people are saying. So having that mute all feature is, is kind of nice. There's also some more options here and you can mute participants on entry. Uh, you can allow participants to unmute themselves, allow participants to rename themselves. So different options here to help you have more control over what's going on in your meeting. So those are different managed participant options. One of the most useful options, I think, as an instructor or teacher or person holding the meeting is gonna be this share screen option. And if you're looking to do a little bit more than just be a talking head in your Zoom meeting, uh, this share screen button gives you a lot of different options. So we will click on the share screen here and any other windows that I currently have open on my computer uh, are going to pop up here in this share screen area. Uh, one of the most useful features is this whiteboard and I'm going to click into that and you'll notice that my uh, th there's a little smaller window of my video thumbnail is still over here but I've been able to bring up this whiteboard and I can do all these different things everything from drawing with it so if I'm talking about some sort of a graph or, you know, I'm a runner. So let's say I was communicating with some other runner friends and this is the loop that we're going to go running. And I just kind of wanted to mention that while I'm doing this, I want to start, uh, we'll start right here. But after I get through that first curve, you know, I do want to do a water break like right here. And then we may take another break here or over here. Uh, I do want to watch out that there's a bunch of trees in this area. So uh, we may take a different alternative route somewhere. We may go this way. You can use this whiteboard to help you and, and give other people that are in your meeting more of a visual aspect to what you're doing. So that is using the whiteboard. And you can also save this, which is really cool because this will be saved. And then you can even go to the folder that it's going to save it to. Uh, so you've got that as well. Uh, when you are done with using this whiteboard, you can hit this stop share up here and that is going to get rid of that. So if you are a teacher uh, and maybe you want to use something such as uh, PowerPoint or maybe you're an instructor, I actually have on my screen, let me see if I can jump over here real quick. Uh, some Google Slides, which would be my PowerPoint slides, that I would like to use and I want to share those with other people. Again, I can go to my share screen and then find that window that's open on my computer. And then from here, I can present these slides, just real basic stuff that I put together. But then with these slides, using the left-right arrows on my laptop as I'm 
uh, hitting my right arrow, I can progress through those slides and everybody can see what I'm trying to communicate with them. In addition to that, using the share screen allows you to, to show things like a picture. So if you've got a picture or pictures that you want to show with people, here's a great picture of me wearing a sombrero. Um, again, you can share pictures. Uh, another thing that I've heard a lot of people want to do is they want to share some sort of a video that they might have. Again, going to the share screen, uh, before you start your meeting, I would recommend that you find the video you want to share and you open it up on your screen, but then you minimize it uh, or you keep it in a separate window. And when you are ready to use that for, uh, for sharing, you would go to share screen and then you'll find that window that's going to be open. Before you actually click into that, though, down here you'll see you want to share computer sound and optimize the screen sharing for that video clip. Uh, and then go ahead and click on that video that you want to share. Uh, when you go ahead, this is a video from our church here. <laughs> It was from a previous Christmas, but you'll see that uh, that is going to allow you to share that video with everybody else that's on this Zoom meeting with you. They will be able to hear it and see it as well. So you can do this also with music. Uh, and again, just finding that audio clip that you want to use. And then just like I did with the video, you can bring it up in a separate window. And then when you are ready to play it, make sure you have the share computer sound and optimize screen sharing. But then when you go to this, you figure out what piece of music you want. And then you can share music as well. So maybe you are a workout instructor and you want some music playing in the background or you've got a track list or something that you want playing, uh, you can also have that going while you are doing your Zoom meeting. So lots of different options with screen share. And then again, by using this arrow here, you can also choose which, uh, you know, if one participant's going to share all this at a time or if you want multiple participants sharing their content simultaneously. So lots of different options with the screen share. There's also the chat button here. And in addition to whatever you're doing with your video, you can also be typing a message uh, to either everybody or you can get the option here where if you just wanted to do it with one person, you can chat to just them. Uh, there is an area here where you can go into file and you can actually attach a file from Dropbox or your uh, Google Drive uh, in that chat as well. Uh, in addition to all of these features, you can record your meeting, which is extremely helpful. Uh, if you want to maybe make this Zoom uh, video conference available afterwards, let's say you want to upload it to YouTube or Facebook so that other people can learn from whatever you discussed in your meeting, this gives you the option to do that. And I'll show you guys that in a minute. There's also this last button here for reactions. Reactions is going to give you the options here to either clap or give a thumbs up. And as we do that, you'll see that's going to pop up on this screen here as well. So just to show you an example here uh, of recording this meeting, once it's recording in my upper left part of the screen, we're going to get an area here where it's indicating that it's recording. I can also pause or stop the recording at this time. Uh, what it's going to do is continue recording on my laptop computer. And then when we are done with this meeting, when I end this meeting, it's going to process all of the video that you're seeing here, put it into a file, and then it's going to ask me where I'd like to save that file on my computer. So if we are done with our meeting here, we are going to end our meeting. And I in ending this meeting, I can end the meeting for all, or I could just leave this meeting. Uh, so these are different options here. If we end this meeting for all, I am then going to see here that it's going to convert this recording so that it's going to be a usable file. And I've actually, uh, it actually popped up here with a folder 
uh, and it's the same folder where I had my whiteboard drawing in it, but this has now saved that file, Zoom Zero, and if I go to Zoom Zero, it's going to be an MP4 file, and then I can use that to upload, like I said, to another source like YouTube or Facebook, depending on what I want to do with that video file. But that in itself is really helpful. So if we have ended our meeting, this takes us back to the main Zoom dashboard. And from this point, what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you guys how you would schedule a meeting. Okay, so scheduling a meeting. Let's say that you are planning on holding a class uh, at a specific time. You may not want to just go into host a meeting and start it right up. You want to let everybody know that you're going to be having this meeting at a certain time. Uh, the best way that I can tell you you're going to want to do this is you could either click on one of these other links here, or I found that if I went to my account after I'm logged in, this brings up a schedule a meeting link at the top here. And if we schedule a meeting, I can give this meeting a topic. So let's say it's going to be um, Jeff's uh, info meeting for uh, for Wednesday. I can put in any type of a description. I can say exactly when it's going to be, the time. Now, because I'm on the basic plan, I'm limited to that 40 minutes, so I can't choose an hour here. I'll need to choose, like, uh, we could do the 30 minutes for the duration, and then what time zone I'm going to be in. If this is a reoccurring meeting, I can choose reoccurring. Uh, I can also have a certain meeting ID. Uh, I would just have it set to generate automatically. Uh, if you're going to be, uh, if you just want certain people to have access to this, you can require a meeting password. You can even make it something really simple, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, if you want a password, you don't have to require a password. Uh, and then as far as video, for the hosts and participants, uh, if you want those on or off, I would say that we'll probably have video for those. Uh, and then for the audio here, if uh, you wanted it for just computer, just telephone, or both. Again, I would pretty much leave these settings how they're set by default. Um, you have different meeting options here. So if you want to enable other people to join before you get there, you can do that. Uh, you can mute participants upon entry, very similar to what we were showing earlier. You can enable a waiting room, which uh, enabling a waiting room is just going to kind of give you more options as people are arriving. Uh, I don't think you really need to do that um, unless that's just another feature that you're looking to add. And then record the meeting automatically on your local computer. You can have that set up as well. So. Once you are, once you've figured out what you want for that meeting, you can go ahead and save. And then it is going to give you the options here of how you want to add this. So you can add this to your Google Calendar or Outlook Calendar, Yahoo Calendar. Uh, that is going to put all this stuff in here for you. From this point, what you're going to want to do then is you are going to want to invite people and this is where having that URL, which is going to be this URL right here, is going to come in very handy. Um, and just like I was showing you how you can invite people uh, before, what you can do is copy that URL, copy this meeting invitation, and then go to your email. So in my instance, it would be my Gmail. Compose a new uh, message. I can go to this area where I type in the message. I'm going to hit Control V on my computer. And then again, this is the main link that they're going to need to click through. I can type in who I want to email that off to and then what the subject is. Jeff's info meeting for Wednesday. Well, you get the idea. Uh, and then send that off. Now, just to show you before, when I was explaining here that they would be getting an email, this is the email I send to myself. So anybody you're going to invite to this meeting is going to get an email just like this. And if they want to join the meeting, they will just simply click through this link 
and it will give them instructions on what they need to do. They don't need to be paying for Zoom. Um, they will ask them if they have Zoom installed, and then just like we did before here, it's going to ask if uh, they want to open it. Um, it, and then if it, they're not prompted for this, they can just click through here. So this is what somebody receiving one of your invitations is going to get if you are scheduling that meeting. If you found this video helpful, be sure to smash that like button. And if you know somebody where this video might help them out, be sure to share this video with them. And if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, take a second right now, hit that subscribe button as well as that little notification bell, and you'll get notified every time we release new videos on tech, gadgets, do-it-yourself projects, and more. My name is Jeff. I appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to make every day awesome and I will see you guys in the next video. So usually at the end of these videos, I've got some sort of funny outtakes or something, and honestly, I didn't really have any outtakes on this video, so I figured let's pay a visit to my two golden doodles, and I'll let them steal the rest of this show. Bailey, how you doing? Yeah. What are you guys up to? You're working hard, I can see. Dash, what do you got? What is that? Can you set? Oh, what a good puppy. All right, well, you guys keep working hard. Thanks for letting me crash your doggy party.